This is the Nordic tradition where mother is mother is the giver of all the uh, result of our karma. So that is the phala, and phala also means fruits in in the same way. That's why people offer fruits to mother. But actually, uh, when we say phala harini, harini means who takes away. Phala daini is who gives the fruit. If you say phala harini puja, if you philosophically put it. what keeps us bound what keeps us in this world or a relative existence as we have discussed earlier is because of our action every action bears the fruit of action or the result of action that prompts us to do more and more action more and more karma so it is karma and its phala karma and its result karma and its result this keeps on going there is no end of this unless we stop desiring but when you when you stop desiring what makes us to stop desiring if there is a if this is the mobile phone it is so good that i like it it is so good that i desire for it i want it but if i come to know actually it's a dummy phone it is not a real phone then my attraction for that phone suddenly disappears concept of phone is there that's fine that is a different thing but about this particular object which i am so fond of unless i come to know it is dummy unless i come to know that it has limited capacity to give me eternal happiness see we do not understand or neither we consider most of us we cannot see beyond few feet we cannot see beyond few hours few days this our desires are momentary desires because we know life will come to an end at the most you can plan is you can plan for your life but in between ignorance is that we think that this life will continue we have information that life is limited nobody's life is eternal but can you imagine about your own life that it is going to end when it will end we do not know <coughs> so we don't have this notion that i will not exist this body will fall but i will continue to exist because in reality i as a existence never becomes non existent that feeling is there that that how to say there is a inborn feeling of everybody even an animal that i do not die look at the way people irresponsibly behave during covid period your next house somebody has died but you are sick you don't know i will not die they may die i will not die and people are not ready to follow simple rules many ways elders experts government wants to convey that you are not safe even if you take double dose of vaccine you may have it so they say we do not know whether how long we will have to follow this sanitization and vaccine this regular vaccination and mask and self safe distance and all that maybe this will become the new norm we do not know at least for a few years we do not know so those who are feeling and ex- expecting that 
oh, I will be within few months it will be okay and I will fly again, I will go here, go there, meet there, meet there. This is the nature's or God's another way to tell us that wake up that this world is very relative. Wake up that this existence which you are thinking permanent is not permanent. So, mother takes away with your devotion and prayers when you become more and more desireless by grace of mother, then only the fruits of your action which is responsible to to raise some more desires to do the same karma. Those fruits are taken away by mother. The ignorance is taken away by mother. That's why somebody takes away the result of your action. If somebody steals the uh, salary of your one month work, you don't feel good. Then why you are worshipping mother who wants to take away all the result of your action? Because there is a beautiful song in Bengali. I do not know, many of you may not have heard this. It is about Mother Kali. Bhayankari Tore Kali Ke Bole Matara. Why people call you a savior? In the last line, there is a beautiful two lines are there. It says that Moron chole tui matare nishko kole tule. With the pretext of death, which, he, which an, with an excuse of death, actually you are taking your own children back to your lap. It's not easy because we are identified with the body. That's why we do not want to go away or go out of the body. We don't want to die. So it's a very, very painful experience it should be. But God is great. God has made our life also easy and death also easy. How the life is easy? Life is easy because you do not know what next moment is going to happen. If you know, you will be worried. If you come to know, by next, next Sunday you are going to die. These seven days will be horrible for you. So you do not know. And that's a bliss. You do not know whether tomorrow you will go or not. You do not know how many days you will last or not. So we live happily as if we are not going to die. And it makes death easier. How? Of course, when we say the accidental deaths and many painful deaths are there. Every death has some pain involved. Death is like you are going to deep sleep every night. You are completely away from your body. You are completely disconnected with your body as if. That's why technically it is called Khanda Pralaya. The dissolution, Pralaya, Pralaya is dissolution. The dissolution of the world, dissolution of the universe happens every day. And that is called your deep sleep. That you are not aware about anything of this world. Not that you are unaware about the things of the world. Even the existence or non-existence of the objects of the world doesn't have concept. The very concept is absent. This is a very interesting thing to know. I am sitting here. If I go away, you will feel my absence. So presence and absence are attached to an object. The object is present. The object is absent. Presence and absence both have to have an object to be attached with. Without that, it doesn't mean anything. There is no concept of presence or absence of anything of this world, including your body. 
in the deep sleep. But still you exist. You exist. Because when you come out of your deep sleep, you have these two notions always. Wow, I was so happy. I was so, I was in bliss. This bliss is what kind of bliss, you know? This bliss in the deep sleep is a, is a, is a happiness of a person who used to carry a big load on his head and for time being you remove that load. So he's happy. That is not happiness because you got something. This is happiness because you are relieved of something. It is something like you have a thousand dollar debts. Somebody gave you thousand dollars and you paid off your debts. You didn't get anything. Only your negative balance is zero now. There is nothing positive to add to. But the negative is reduced. That's why deep sleep and samadhi are different. In deep sleep it is like this. You got thousand dollars just to be free from your debts. All the pains of this body, pains of this world. We have different kinds of pains. We have our own physical pain. We have pain because of our relations. We have pain because of the surrounding us. Because of any reason. Everything is painful. This is very interesting. That everything is painful. But we feel everything is a source of happiness. That's why Swami Vivekananda says... That the misery comes with the crown of happiness. You think it is happiness. Actually it is misery. So, it's up to us to see. Whenever you have a desire, whenever you try to fulfill the desires, the chances of it, that your desire is not fulfilled or half fulfilled, or is fulfilled sometimes. Let us no need to tell anybody. Put your hand on your heart and ask whatever you wanted, how much you got in your life. It's not that you got less, but it is because your desires are plenty. So the sukha and dukkha, the happiness and misery is not how, what amount of things I am getting, but it is what amount of thing I am getting how many percentage of my desires are fulfilled? That's why many poor countries, people are happy and rich countries, people are not happy. Because my desires are so much and I got this much only, so I'm unhappy. But my desires are this much, I got this much, so I'm happy. The less desire is the cause of happiness. Not the more things get is can be a cause of happiness. You may get it. Instantly you want to be happy, you reduce your desire. Then whatever you get, you will be happy out of it. But your desires are so much, whatever you get is not enough. And that's why everybody feels frustrated and miserable and all that. And who is powerful? It is a very relative term. Today I was seeing, I was browsing, sometimes I browse for a while, Facebook and all that. There was a video of a leopard which was attacked by the wild dogs. And believe me, the leopard was so miserable. Where, the, where dog and where leopard? You cannot compare. But it's the situation. There's another video. There's a small pool of water. In a, in a, how to say, in a, in a ditch, in a ditch, and a tiger is following in that ditch. Tiger also is not able to climb because of the slippery walls of that ditch. And in that same small pool of water, there is a small duck. And the tiger wants to catch the duck. 
As soon as tiger turns, the duck goes inside the water and comes out of the other side. The tiger goes other side, the duck goes inside the water, comes out from the other side. This kind of incidents also made the biologist or made this zoologist to think that when you say survival of the fittest, maybe fittest not physical only, but also intelligent way. I remember when family shifted from Singapore to China, to the morning she left. Interesting fact. So she sent me some photos from from airport, deserted airport, and people are wearing whatever PPEs and masks and everything. Nobody can recognize each other because your whole body is covered. So she told, I will go to, as soon as I reach China, 21 days, I have to quarantine myself. So they have a small dog. So dog has gone earlier. And husband received the dog. Husband is already there for the last two, three months. There is no quarantine period for the dog. All the birds and animals are happily moving around, flying around except the stupid human being. And we are tormented by a virus which is not even visible. It is something invisible as if, of course it exists objectively. Except the scientist goes in the laboratory, they cannot see what this virus is all about. But our life is tormented by that invisible something. Who is more powerful? Who is more powerful in this world? This virus can disturb the whole human race. Seven billion people are disturbed by this something which is invisible, which is so small, which cannot be even seen. Doesn't have eyes, doesn't have hands, doesn't have feet, but can torment you and me. Those who are familiar, most of you are familiar. Even Peter would have known the story. You know the story of Mahabharata? Story of Mahabharata, there are five brothers in one side and there are hundred brothers in other side. Believe me, these five brothers, there were equal number of strong enemy among the Kauravas, the hundred brothers. In the Kauravas army, there were many whom the Pandavas cannot defeat. Think one by one. Bhima had no capacity to destroy Duryodhana. Arjuna has no capacity to, to, to kill Karna. You will still forget about him. Their strength was only one that Krishna was with them. And everybody, Bhishma, Drona, Kripa, Duryodhana, Karna, everybody was killed with the intervention of Krishna. Your being truthful, your being good is not enough. The spirituality or the divinity is something which we must have to anchor in. Anyway. So what we are talking is this. That our karma, earlier I have told, but it is a technical thing, better to be reminded once more. Why do we karma? Why do we do karma? Because we have a desire. If you don't have a desire, you don't do that karma. If you are not thirsty, you will not go even to the even to the kitchen to take a or to the fridge to take a bottle of water if you are not thirsty. Nobody does anything if they don't have desire. 
karma is the result of desire. Every karma we do is the result of our desire. To fulfill that desire, we do karma. And the desires are produced, desires are increased. Because of this ignorance that I am incomplete. To complete myself, I fulfill my desires. I have these desires. If you are full, you don't have desire. If your stomach is full, even if the thing which you like most, even if that I give you, you don't eat because you are full. So your ignorance gives rise to the desires and desires give rise to the action. You cannot stop action until you stop desires. You cannot stop desires until you reduce your ignorance. Mother takes away this thing from us, this continuity, this never-ending chain of desire, action, fruit of action which gives rise to desire. You know those who are playing with a, this lottery and all that all the time, every day they lose, every day, whether it is Two dollars, five dollars, ten dollars, whatever. Every day they lose. With a desire, one day I will win. How many people win? If a few thousand people play, maybe one person will win. Or maybe a million people play, one person will win. What about the rest of the people? The desire keeps them, keeps them doing what they are doing. They suffer. These are all examples given by Sri Ramakrishna about the camel eating the thorny plants, bleeds, but doesn't stop eating. This example is given for this. We suffer. It is not, it is not a, it is not something to be condemned that we suffer. But it is to be condemned that after suffering also we don't understand. Here is the interesting. If you suffer, you understand. I know I have diabetes. I couldn't stop my desire and ate so much sweets. My sugar shoot up. I suffered insulin. Doctor has to give. As soon as my sugar came down, again I rushed to the sweets to eat. This action, these people are called fools. Why? Because you know. If you do not know, you suffer. It's obvious because you do not know. Even if you know, we suffer. Still their desire doesn't come to an end. We again go to fulfill that desire. This cycle has to come to an end. In Gospel of Sri Ramakrishna, just very first few pages practically is the essence of whole gospel. I, I read quite a few books before my joining when I was 18, 20 years old. But the gospel of Sri Ramakrishna, I read only first 15 to 20 pages only. That in itself spoiled my mind. Because everything is there. Everything is there. So this this chain, somebody has to break this chain. And one who breaks this chain is the mother. Because mother takes away the result of your karma, fruits of your karma. Then only the chain will be broken. Otherwise you do karma, you get the fruit of the action, do more karma, correct? Tell me one person in your business, you have a little more profit this year. What will be your reaction next year? You do work more so that you get more profit. Somebody, somebody sent me one day a message. Very interesting. The money which you leave in this world, 
before you when you die think of how much you did work to earn that money which you have left it doesn't belong to you you are not going to take it so for what for what did you do that work don't tell me we get thinking oh it is for uh, people who live who i leave behind no no for them also it is the same thing eventually it is the same because we do not know when we go so we keep on doing work some people with some understanding some crazy understanding comes in their mind i will tell the real story I, this is not a this is not imagination it was in 2003 or 2004 i think a very very devoted good couple used to come just the other day i yesterday i told to one swami if he has the a telephone number of those people i will like to contact them that is the only couple i have seen what was the age the daughter was about 8 years old so lady was in her late 30s and the husband was in early 40s or whatever so the gentleman came to me once and says swami ji i am thinking i will resign from my job So, but you have a good job in Singapore, working with the city bank or something. Yeah, yeah, it is a good, good job, permanent job, good salary. Everything is there. So, why you want to leave? Hey, enough is enough, Swami Ji. How long you want me to earn and live this life? When I will sit down and and remember God or do my spiritual practices? I say, wait, wait, wait. You do not resign. Eh? Ask your wife. because you have a daughter to look after he says swami ji my wife only told me to resign they have a small house in coimbatore they literally resign and never join any company anywhere in her, in his very early 40s or late 30s this gentleman staying in coimbatore in the paternal house whatever money he has earned of course it become 50 50 times more in india kept a big sum for the daughter to for education and marriage and all that husband and wife volunteer because we have two centers in coimbatore one is a math center one is a mission center serving in the mission coming at home spending time as much as possible in spiritual practices reading now everything is online but reading attending classes and singing at home and all that the whole family the daughter the parents and mother of this gentleman every saturday every sunday you will find them from 4 o'clock to 8 o'clock in the ashram attending classes and arati and bhajans and everything this crazy understanding can come into some it filters into some people's mind i remember swami bhuteshananda ji A devotee used to come. <laughs> Very interesting story. He had a huge business of uh, hosiery. We call it hosiery in India, which uh, which uh, which makes the undergarments and all that. So he used to come to Swami Buddha Shanti every day. Buddha Shanti was vice president and then became president. Maharaj, tell me what is the adesh for me? Adesh means order. what is the order for me and buddha sanji will smile and sometime ask him if i tell you will you accept my order you are only telling no 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 whatever you say i will do so a certain time time came buddha sanji was his guru and such a great great soul when he felt that it is right right time for this gentleman he told how old is your son Oh, he finishes graduation. He is a very intelligent young man. He has joined my business as early as possible. Hand over the whole business in his hand and be free. Spend time in your spiritual practices. And this gentleman did the same thing. 
it, was, it he took at least few months and whole business wazir business was given to him <laughs> his his name was his title title was title was kundu 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 is a bengali title so bhutashan they started telling eshechilo kundu tar gure gelo mundu means kundu's mund mundu is the head that his head is turned now but the time was right for him to do that anyway the idea is this idea is this with all spiritual practice grace of god grace of guru grace of the scriptures we have to break this chain it is the grace of god if you can understand that scriptures and the religious books are not like any other secular subject for you to study it directly pertains to your life we had a great swami ji swami jaydevananda he told me once when you read the scriptures these are his words eh? when you read the scriptures whether it is gospel of sri ram krishna or bhagavad gita or which ever scripture the day you start feeling that god is speaking to me bhagavad gita's every shloka which he says to arjuna arjuna is only a only a nimitta arjuna is only a character in mahabharata actually krishna says this to me when sri ramakrishna speaks to the devotees you imagine that you are in that small room where sri ramakrishna is talking to devotees sri ramakrishna is telling me to do this he is not telling devotees to do it he is telling me to do it when we understand the scriptures or the words of god he came to this world for me he came to teach me unfortunately i was born after him after he left but actually he came for me because he wanted to say this to me that's why somehow i came in contact with him and when i read his book he wants me to practice this he wants me to understand this when 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 this when this connection is established then only your spiritual life will be in reality otherwise as famaji says many things are there in our life religion and spirituality is one of them oh you know you know you know we have a, we have a contact with the mission you know yes it is not a social contact you are attached to a movement and fortunately how different is this movement you see so many religious movements everywhere i feel sometimes that people are stuck up somewhere cannot expand cannot go forward in their understanding we need to get inspired from somewhere which doesn't limit you so when you feel that sri ramakrishna is telling to me sri krishna is telling to me and until i practice there is no use of telling that i follow sri ramakrishna i am telling i am the monk of ramakrishna order what does it mean if i do not follow the teachings of sri ramakrishna does it mean anything it doesn't mean anything it doesn't mean anything oh i am a devotee of ramakrishna mission no devotee of ramakrishna mission is fine how much you follow that much only you are devotee remaining is social contact so this idea you must be clear in our mind so so mother mother takes away gracefully some fruits that's why many times you will find that those who are spiritual seekers the life becomes a bit miserable people say me oh you 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 are a devotee of god why your life should be so much miserable because you are ready to understand his teachings that's why it happens to he can he can take a take a risk to make you understand this we have a she is I, i can't tell she is a devotee but she is a devotee of god anyway she don't need to be inverted comma devotee of sri ramakrishna
but the life became ups and down, upside down. Not of suffering in our life. So when I came to know, she is one of the counselors in our counseling center. So we wanted to appoint someone. So it is God's wish that she applied and we shortlisted her and we found she is a Chinese, she is Catholic Christian. So I was in the interview panel, so I said, are you aware that Wings Counseling Center is under Ramakrishna Mission, which is a Hindu organization? Yes, I know. I do not know much about it, but I know. She wrote her age is around 39 years old. But in the marital status, she had written widow. So when I saw that application, so at the end of the interview, I asked her that if you don't mind, can I ask you a question? Yes, yes, please ask. In your marital status, you have written widow. You are so young. What happened? So she smiled at me and said, oh, what happened? Nothing. I was just married. My husband was 29 years old. We used to go for a walk in the evening. We were just walking on the footpath. And he just collapsed. He was 29 years old. I had nothing to say. I said, oh, I'm so sorry to hear this. But it's okay, it's okay. I did not ask anything because I don't have interest in to know about her personal life, of course. Then she joined. More than one year she is. So I have a practice that every quarter or every six months, I talk individually to the staff, one-to-one, -one, just to know how they feel, whether they have any concerns or they have any discomfort or whatever. One-to-one -one, and being a chairman of the committee and president of the organization, I told that I can help you if you have any difficulty. So nicely, once or twice I talked to her, nothing major. Fine morning, she says to me that four or five, once in four or five months is too long a period. Will it be okay if I come and see you at least once in a month? So I say, you can very well come as our staff, but I would like to know why you want to see me. No, not from counseling point of view, but from spiritual point of view. I said, okay. So, a few sittings I have given her. I'm telling one thing. It is a few months, a few days before. She sent me a message. This is what I'm telling. That, that it doesn't matter who you are, where you are. And she says this to me in this message. Thank you, Swamiji, for taking my spiritual growth seriously. I'm really thankful to God. It's not because my pleasure, no, no. I'm not telling from the, see from her standpoint, not from my standpoint. I'm really thankful to God for your spiritual sharings of the teachings, grounding me in what is truly important. Then I told we understand that spirituality is universal. Religions are many. Spirituality are not many. Spirituality is the same. Love towards God. Your God could be Christ. Your God could be Krishna. Your God could be Allah. But spirituality is universal. So she said one thing which I did not say during my interview I want to share. I said, what is that? Before I got married, 
for four years I stayed in Philippines. Why? No, I had joined the church. I was a missionary. I wanted to be a nun. But anyway, I came back and I got married. Then I said, you see, this is a Hindu interpretation. Whatever I know about you is. God cannot fulfill opposite kind of desires. You have little desires to get married and settle down also. You have a desire to be a nun also. So God fulfilled first your wish and four years you practically remained like a nun. She didn't do ordination but she, she became like a nun. Then she was married for almost four to five years. So almost similar amount of experience of both the lives. And I told her, that probably, just now as I told you also, probably you are ready to take this blow because God wants you to turn to spirituality on a permanent basis as if in this life. And it doesn't matter. We are the last people to tell you to go to temple or to... But because I am a Hindu monk, so my terminology and my logic, etc. will be more of a Hindu monk. I have read little of Bible and about Christianity, but I may not be as good as others. But she says, no. We have some other devotees coming who belongs to different other religions. Came to me and says... When I attend your classes, she comes to the other lady. She regularly comes to my Sunday class, though now it is closed. There is nothing what you say contradicts my faith. And I never feel that a Hindu monk is speaking. I don't see any difference between what I have learned in my life. This is Buddhist. So spirituality, because I told, that's why I do not talk of religion, I talk about spirituality, we change a person. Until we change spiritually, until we change as a person, religious activities may not mean much or may not be that much helpful. Anyway, so coming back to our topic, that God wants to teach us every day, every day happening. For example, this COVID-19 situation is around the globe, everywhere. How many people learn lesson out of it? Very few. People grumble against government and people, people say we are suffocated and we are not going about to grumbling, grumbling, grumbling. Only few people, you will find percentage-wise very few people, who have taken this as an opportunity to be more introvert. Those who are spiritual seekers, many of our Swamis have spoken on different platforms about it. They take this opportunity. It will help you to be secluded. It will help you to self-quarantine. It will help you not to spread COVID to others by remaining within your home. And that which you could not do, you could not stay, spend quality time with your family, or give more time to spiritual practices. All this you could not do. This is the right time for you to do that. I have seen Chetananji doing that. I have seen Tyagaranji doing this. I have seen uh, many Samarpananji doing this. We also. So, take this adversity as an opportunity. Yes, adversity comes. For example, when we are sick, when we are not physically well, so you are in bed. You cannot move. You cannot go. That is the right time. When you are healthy, you will find your desires are more. When you are sick, your desires are less. Because there are so many restrictions. It's a, it's a better spiritual time when you are in a less desire mode. Though you are physically not that good, but at that time spiritual practice is easier. Here and there, directly or indirectly, this concept is discussed by Swamiji. Swamiji once, he was in Kashmir, so he told to the ladies who accompanied him, he took two stones and strike the stones like this and told, 
when I am sick, I become as hard as the stone. Hard means I am completely within myself. I am not, I am not, what to say? I am not adulterated by the world. I am not affected by the world. And I am as strong physically like a stone. So idea is this, idea is this, that Mother is there to grace us. Mother is there to... As Ramakrishna says, it's on my interpretation, that the wind of grace is always blowing. It is you who will raise the sail of your boat. If you don't raise the sail of your boat, your boat will move slowly. If you raise, it will move faster. So, one of the disciples of Sri Ramakrishna was asked, what is this sail example? Pal tule de, pal is a word in Bengali. Kripa bata shboiche, tora pal tule de. What is this pal? What is this sail which Sri Ramakrishna is telling to raise? The dying disciple told, Purusharthir pal. Or your sail of your self effort. Grace is there. You put your effort, and that grace will be helpful to you to, to sail through or to go forward. So whenever the difficulties come, whenever the, whenever the suffering comes, suffering can be taken as a blessing this way, only this way, there is no other way. That probably I am able to take this, maybe God feels that I am suitable now to understand that this world is so fragile, this life is so fragile. What we see permanent is not permanent, it is temporary. Maybe it is the right time for me to understand. Maybe God thinks that I am able to understand. And that's why, that's why I am getting this in my life. Many, many people, many, many people. Remember Pawari Baba's one incident is there. The sickness is the, is the messenger of God who comes to me. Because at that time, I am able to understand. So, this is the idea that mother is here to, to bless us and when she blesses, the blessings is not always, always pleasurable. Blessings come with a cost and that cost we have to pay. And that, that cost is this, that if we are ready to accept this adversities in life as opportunity to grow. So, when we had started today, that mother takes away these fruits of your action. You are doing good, but the effect is not as expected. Because mother takes away that credit which, you, which should have come to in your name. No connection with somebody will come and give you pain, will make you understand something, wants to teach you. Life is how you take it. And if you say, I am the greatest sufferer and everybody is happy in this world, everybody thinks so actually speaking. Everybody feels that my problem is the biggest problem. But ask the people. We don't even know what kind of situation people are in. No house, no food, no medicine, no comfort. Nothing is there. Still they are alive. We do so much charity. Eh? You say now every day we get reports COVID-19. I feel from other point of view. We are doing relief. Just, just for a while, stand as a recipient from the mission. That you don't have anything and you are waiting in the door of Ramji Commission to get some rice, some dal, some oil, some salt. We get an opportunity to serve people. We are not doing any favor to anybody. That spirit we must have. We must have the spirit. Because it is a very, very painful condition for the people to spread their hands and ask for some help for, for sheer survival. Just, just food. How much painful the life could be that they have to stand in front of somebody to ask for little rice 
because they don't have that. I I see very very innovative ways of helping people have started during because of COVID nineteen. I get the reports from many of our centers. They went to the small temples because the people don't go to the temples. The priest doesn't have any income. They went to the rickshaw pullers because people don't go out. So rickshaw pullers are standing on this uh, outside. The small shops, the pakora wala and pani puri walas and this walas and the, people don't come to them. They are not beggars. They dignified way they used to earn money. No return. Even that has stopped. They will never come to your doorstep to ask for begging. We go to them and say, "Sir, I have brought something. Please accept." So life is life teaches us so many lessons, provided we are ready to learn. Anyway, so mother is mother is in this way takes away the fruits of our action, so that new desire is not arised in our mind. That's why even if she is full of harini, she is the snatcher of fruits. She takes away the fruits of our action, but still we worship her because she takes away these fruits to teach us, so that we don't have the next desire, and then less desire we have less karma. The less and less karma you have, more and more chances of you being introvert is there. Believe me, one day whether it is you or me, you or me. A time will come in our life when even if you want to do something, you won't be able to. Our our end is not the same. So different people have different end. In general, when we grow old, desires could be there, but ability of performing anything is not there. So which is heaven? Heaven is that when you are old, you have minimum desires, so that your minimum frustration will be there and more. freedom of mind to remember god and hell is that that the body is not able to do any action body is not able to enjoy anything but mind is full of desires that is hell that is real hell i want to eat i want to eat but sir you cannot eat you cannot eat if i give you food you will die you cannot eat Teeth are not there. Sugar is high. BP is high. Cholesterol is high. And those who are so close to you will not be that close to you at the end. These are all. These are all real facts. These are not the stories to make anybody afraid. It's all karma, and it is the way of life that it will be so. Covid nineteen has taught these lessons also to people. Look at the first wave when it happened. Maximum people died initially in Italy, and who were the people to die? They are collecting bodies from the homes where the elderly people live, used to live alone. Thousands cannot move, cannot do anything, just nothing but accept it. To accept this. With grumbling and suffering and crying, that will be good. Or accepting peacefully in the name of God, remembering God. Body will go one day. If God wishes there like this body to go, let it go. We are we are many, not only monks but even the devotees, have taken this lessons from life. That whatever happens, whatever happens, God has kept us in much, much, much better. We have no, 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 no right to grumble. But a time will come. Whatever good you are, this dream called this life will come to an end. Just now, before before you called me, I was talking to one volunteer. That say you are seeing a dream, eh? and you are living with so many people. Then you wake up. Are you going to take permission from the people in your dream? Okay, bye bye. I'm going to wake up now. No, there is no concept of waking up in the dream. When you are wake up, do you cry for those people? No. In the same way, now we are in a dream. We take each other, talk each other. When we will wake up, 
this will be looking like a dream. You are so much so that the remembrance of the dream also will not be there with you. So philosophy is not only in books. Philosophy is the life. What we are living is the philosophy. So let us hope by teachings of scriptures and great souls and prophets and incarnations and great people, our life will be more bright. Thank you for reminding me. Otherwise, I would not have uh, thought deeply.